Order. I'm calling out Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I believe I've got five minutes, and I have to say that it's going to take me all of five minutes just to read out the, the heading, the title of this bill. <laughs> the Social Security Stopping Benefit Payments for Offenders Who Repeatedly Fail to Comply with Community Sentences Amendment Bill. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, um, my, I stand with a heavy heart because one of my uh, one, of, one of my heroes in the parliamentary golden oldies rugby team, uh, uh, one of our esteemed co-captains. I thought that when he wasn't in the house, that he would be out there on the streets, pounding the pavements, working on his aerobic fitness and getting a bit of bulk in the thighs and definition in the abs and, and uh, a bit of mass in the shoulders. But no, instead he's been wasting his time <laughs> instructing some poor official in the MSD to write a speech for him. I must admit, I'll give him credit, he delivered it well. Uh, well done there, Mr. Mr. Mitchell. But let, let me say that this uh, bill is, is a total waste of time all, all Mr Mitchell's doing is just heaping more and more woes and responsibilities on the poor Department of Corrections. I mean, they're, they're the people that are going to have to administer this. They're the people that are going to have to round up all those uh, people who have been jaywalking and riding bicycles without helmets and not riding their cycles on the footpath. Those poor people that go down to the local park on a Saturday while uh, the probation service or corrections watch over them as they rake the sand pit and, and uh, rake leaves and trim trees and all those sorts of things. Those are the people that are going to uh, be affected by this uh, uh, bill, Mr Speaker. But what is so inhumane about the bill is cutting these poor people's benefits uh, by half if they have a child and, and cutting the, the benefit entirely if, um, if they don't have children. I just wonder why they don't, um, why Mr Mitchell hasn't written into the bill uh, corrections latest punishment for people who, uh, who don't conform with, uh, with what they're meant to conform to because uh, corrections, and maybe they've, they've been trialling this uh, on the side and, and it might be uh, an amendment to the bill later on, but uh, corrections today have been head up because uh, they've been tying prisoners to the beds. Tying prisoners to beds. Now, wouldn't that be a lot uh, kinder to, to poor beneficiaries that instead of cutting their benefits, they just tied them to the beds? Now, this, is, this has been happening in, in New Zealand's prisons, and uh, I have to say that the uh, ombudsman, I have to congratulate Peter Boschio, Judge Peter Boschio, for the great work he's doing. He's rapidly becoming a superhero of mine because he's holding this government to account. He's making them actually... Uh, he's making them actually uh, accountable for some of their uh, silly decisions, such as tying uh, uh, prisoners to, the bed, to their bed. Now, this poor prisoner, he actually had mental health issues, and so he's been punished for being unwell, and that's just the, uh, another example of this terrible government, absolutely shocking government, having their priorities wrong, punishing people instead of helping them, uh, in, in particular, this poor guy who, in, uh, who was tied down simply because he was unwell. And <clears throat> the prison inspectorate is now being uh, made to account for this. So the prison inspectorate was meant to actually write week, weekly reports to the, uh, to the ombudsman uh, on this incident, and yet they, they haven't, Mr Speaker. I think... The prison inspectorate has got a lot to hide. I asked uh, them if, uh, corrections if I could go and talk to the prison inspectorate last week on a totally unrelated matter, and uh, was blocked at every turn. This government has got its priorities wrong when they could be dealing with the housing crisis and making sure people aren't living in the, those mobile apartments, also known as motor vehicles, when they could be putting money into uh, Te Puyo Marae and other uh, real issues that are facing New Zealand. We have... Uh, my, my hero, uh, co-captain of the Parliamentary Golden Oldies rugby team, presenting silly bills like this to the House.